Hi everybody, thank y'all for tuning in uh, to a Pints and Amiga tech thing slash unboxing. We have some hardware and everything that we've ordered, some things that have been sent in to us, as well as a couple of uh, projects and things that we've completed, worked on, and everything. I also have here, as you can probably tell, I have some dogfish head, some dragons and yum yums, which I will actually pop right now. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, don't mix your beer and your hardware. Well, that's why it's way the heck over here. And so, let's get started. There we go. Mm, so good. So, now, I, I understand what you're saying here, and I can already hear the comments. Well, he's already unpacked this. Well, there's, there's a reason behind that. You'll see. So, this is a little bit of a special circumstance on the hardware because I kind of need to make sure all the parts and stuff were here so without any further ado this is a a4000 daughter board made by uh, Aranet this is the new revision B version 1.2 I actually bought this from him uh, with only like three units left this is an awesome little A4000 daughter board replacement. So here are your Zorro 3 slots, your, your graphics card slot here, your other Zorro 3. So it's four Zorro 3 slots in your regular uh, 4000 graphics card slot, 3000 graphics card slot. But this is awesome because this is a new redesigned board. It's all new modern PCB printing. It also has this awesome freaking flame print on the back. How awesome is that? And everything but I kind of do to and also as you can probably tell there's this nice little space invaders for this uh, uh, you know print thing here for if you needed to break this off you could uh, but anyway I due to the nature of this being that it's you know a DIY kind of build it yourself project I need to make sure that all the parts were there so that's why it's kind of a not quite unboxing because it's kind of already sorted boxing but I need to make sure all of my ICs and capacitors and all that, which are right here, are in place. And then all my slots were there. I need to make sure everything was there. And then the cool thing about this board is it also includes a VGA uh, socket on it and spot and everything for it. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody out there that's watching this uh, knows that uh, if, I'm, if I'm wrong or not. But I think all this is is just a standard just pass through. I don't think it does any kind of flicker fixing or anything like that. So if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments below. But I think that this is just basically a RGB, you know, basically like a 25 pin to, to VGA adapter no flicker fixing or anything like that but i understand why you included our net and thank you but unfortunately for anybody that's known we have a va 2000 graphics card so this is you know a cool novelty but not necessarily useful to me but thank you for including it because i know a lot of you amiga people out there that own a 4000 um you know that don't necessarily have the resources to get you a nice fpga graphics card or an old stock graphics card so good hardware looking forward to uh building this and everything uh keep an eye out because i will be at bo zimmerman's uh you know central texas user um, commodore user group up in round rock uh to to work on this he has all the tools and, and things that i need in the expertise necessary to actually build and do this correctly in the right way so I might actually be filming that. We're still trying to work out the logistics for that. So if I can actually make that happen and work that out, be on the look for that because I will be posting potentially either a live stream or a pre-recorded video of that to uh, show y'all and, and actually have show, show this being built and everything. This is very interesting. And for y'all that are wondering, you know, how much does this cost? It's about 80 to hundred dollars US. Um, I think it comes out to somewhere right around like 60 or 70 euros, something like that. Uh, the last time I checked, I think he's out of them. Uh, and like I said, I bought him when he only had like three left. It was, it was an awesome deal. I think they're well worth the money. And of course, anything modern build 
quality and things like that modern pcb and modern engineering is going to show a lot there and i just dropped that on the floor so it's gonna last you know for 30 40 years hopefully so moving on i'm gonna get that out of the way Moving on to our first package here, and I'm gonna bring up my little X-Acto knife. So I have some things. This is from Amiga on the Lake. This is some things that I ordered for me and my dad and for a couple of our machines. And there's some good goodies that my dad's probably gonna be surprised to see in here. This is, uh, and I also had some more stuff coming, but I'm getting a little anxious. So there might be actually a part two to this because there's some more stuff coming from overseas that is still gonna take a little while to get here. So keep an eye out for that as well. But let's go ahead and open this up. And again, this is from Amiga on the Lake. This is, as far as I know, the only US Amiga modern hardware for classics, next gen, all that sort of stuff. All alike, Amiga kit, Amy, uh, Amiga store, those sort of guys. But here in the US, I think Amiga on the Lake is the only one that actually sells classic and next-gen Amiga hardware. And this is where I've ordered this stuff from. And let's get this open here. All right, here we go. So this is gonna be a little bit of a surprise for, for, for both on our end and on y'all's end. So here you go. Uh, this is the shipping details. Here we go. Thank you for your order. And it's signed by Jeff and Aaron from Pines Amiga. So thank you, Jeff and Aaron. That's a hand signature right there. So thank you very much. And very prompt shipping. Again, here in the United States. So got here pretty quick through the mail. Put that up over there. Let's open this up. I think I know what this is. Okay. So here's uh, part number one already. They kind of wrapped a couple of things. Oh, I don't want to give away a couple of things. So I'm going to wrap that back up. So part number one is we have, we've been actually trying to get a 500 and 600 up off the ground. And the big thing of it is, is we only have a European power supply, which we've modded. I'll get to here in a moment. But at the same time, we're trying to build another power supply mod out of an ATX uh, power supply and I just bought the 5 pin 600, 500, 1200 uh, you know connector so this is all comes into parts and everything like that and it's very nicely built and it's all kind of right there and oh, I might have just screwed up and goofed that all let's see if I can get that back together and not lose anything here uh oh <laughs> Okay, there, that'll work good enough. Um, so, yep, it's all right there. There's the, uh, that's the five pin connector for 500, 600s, 1200s, all that sort of stuff. Amiga on the Lake was the only one that I could find that actually had them in stock that wasn't gonna take forever to get here. So thank you, Amiga on the Lake, again, for uh, having these in stock and, and helping us move on with that project that we'll get to. So before I get to this next part, I think I need to get to a big part to make sense of this part because I already kind of know what this part is. So let's move on to this big box and circumvent that for a moment. So some of this stuff, like I said before, is maybe going to be a little bit of a surprise for my dad who's over there keeping everything straight and everything for me and making sure this video is getting recorded good. But yes, I know what these are supposed to be, but I'm excited to see them. And like I said, I still have a couple of more things. Mm, guys, this is so nice. Mm, it's already teasing me. Ah, I'm so excited. But again, like I said, I got a couple of more things coming from Amiga store from uh, Spain and everything that uh, is going to be even a bigger surprise, but this is actually pretty interesting. So here we go. There's some uh, standoffs to start, but here's the big thing. 
is say hello. Hello, Dad. This is a Fiora 020 uh, 33 megahertz accelerator for the uh, for our A600. So this little guy is awesome. This is a 33 megahertz 020 uh, with nine and a half megs of flash RAM. It also comes with the Fiora tool to do a bunch of other cool stuff. And it also allows you to be able to load kickstarts into flash RAM. So you can actually do soft kicks and things like that. And this is just an awesome little accelerator. It's also got an FPU clocked at 40 megahertz on it as well. So this accelerator right here makes a stock 600 faster than a stock 3000. It's awesome. This little thing is amazing. And so thank you for Amiga on the Lake for, uh, for, for sending, well, I mean, I bought it, of course, you know, I paid for it, but thank you Amiga on the Lake for actually having it in stock and being a, distri a distributor, I can't talk, but di a distributor that I can rely on and that can get it to me in a timely fashion. And so, yes, this is gonna be an awesome addition to our 600. It's awesome to see this little thing in person. And yeah, that is definitely an O20 clocked at 33 megahertz. So we might even, we might even have to look into overclocking this slightly. I don't know, maybe we could push it to 40. I don't know. So, uh, but yeah, this is a Fiora EC O20. And that is an o, a Motorola O20 clocked at 33 megahertz with an FPU clocked at 40 megahertz, nine and a half megs of RAM, and with the ability to load kickstarts into Flashmen to do soft kicks in soft boots. So yeah, and then they include the um, the included standoffs and stuff. And no, there's no manual. So, but I'm sure there's a digital way, but yeah, let's get this wrap back up here. Get this package back up, but yeah, that's the, that's been, that's the big surprise for the 600. So yeah, I can already see the grin on my father's face over there. Just, just like the sun. He's, he's excited. I'm excited. That's why I wanted to do this video. So let's put that over here. Now, to get back over here, this is another piece for the 600. And this right here, if I can actually get it out of the packaging in the right way, there we go. This is a IDE to CF card uh, adapter. It's kind of a right angle adapter for the 600. This goes from the 600's IDE interface to a CF card. And the reason why I got this is, so there's a little bit of up in the air about this. I'm pretty sure that this will fit with the Fiora inside of the 600 after looking at pictures and things like that. And looking at sizes, I think that this is going to fit in the side of there just fine and make clearance in between the accelerator card and this card. Because the thing of it is, is on the 600 between this IDE interface and the, and the Fiora, there's not a whole lot of space there. But I think this is gonna work just fine. And this is cheaper than the AM Cider for, for SD and everything like that. And the cool thing about this is that when you put it inside of the 600, and this is our 600 that I recently bought, this is a Powell 600. This will go basically right here uh, above the PCMIA slot and everything right there. I have to modify the case a little bit, but it will go right above that PM PCMIA slot and fit in there just fine. So I have to modify the, the case a little bit but this was $22 versus the AM Cider, which, uh, which does the like standoff and goes out to the IDE to SD thing. And it, that's like 40 bucks. So this was almost half as much. And the, fun, the cool thing about it is, is I already have a CF to SD card adapter from other things. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Um, 
I'm, like I said, I'm kind of risking a couple of things with that, but I think it's going to work fine. And from, from what I said earlier is I think there's going to be plenty of clearance to, to make that work and, and to do that. So there you go. So we have the Fiora, the five pin adapter and the CF card adapter from Amiga on the Lake. Let's get this out of the way. All right, so the big package that probably everybody's going, what's in that big yellow package? This is actually from Amiga Store EU, which is based out of Spain. And I actually have a lot of stuff coming from them. I've actually done like three or four orders. Uh, this is the first one coming in, so I have like two or three more orders waiting to come in. Uh, they're kind of a little bit slow uh, here in the United States coming from overseas. But, you know, it comes with the territory. But they shipped this, uh, I, well, the U.S. got this in through DHL, so... It's the first time from DHL in years that I've actually gotten something from these guys. Uh, DHL here in the States mainly deals with uh, overseas international shipping type stuff anyway nowadays. They're not as big as they used to be. Um, so, let's get that out of the way. Ugh. All right. So, like I said, this is from Amiga Sword EU. This is from the guys over in Spain. They're one of the uh, next biggest Amiga parts resellers, you know, modern parts sort of thing, all alike. Amiga on the Lake, Amy Kit, that sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see. Now, I kind of, again, uh, these are things that I've already ordered and stuff, so I kind of know what the, is in here, but I'm so excited to see this stuff. I've been waiting for it for, for weeks now to come in, so... Even though I've got more stuff coming in, then it's probably going to be part of the second video of this. I just want to open this stuff, and I want to show y'all what we kind of the goodies that are on their way. So, so here's a. This is a. This is probably actually a pretty famous image from from the Omega community. Most of y'all kind of know this. This is uh, the Apollo kind of uh, wallpaper kind of thing. And it's in the form of a freaking postcard. And it says, thank you, Taylor, for your order. Love, Amiga Store EU. So thank you, Amiga Store. Y'all guys are great. This is, the one, this is the first order I've gotten from Amiga Store. And other than the slow shipping, which honestly, I'm going to be honest, kind of sorry, your Spanish uh, shipping and post office stuff kind of sucks. But, hey, I, I understand what it... Okay, so, so I'm going to stop right here because I did not expect this to come in this package. I just saw something that I did not... I didn't even expect to be in this package. So, unfortunately, one of those packages that I thought was going to be coming in from Spain in the next couple of weeks or days is actually in this box. And... My dad, when it's once I open this, is going to absolutely sh pardon my French, but I'm just going to say it. he's going to shit a brick. He's absolutely going to shit a brick when I show this. So I did not expect this to be in this box. So this is kind of a surprise for me because I already saw it and this is, this is absolutely crazy and nuts. So I'm going to try to keep that out of the camera and out of the limelight and show some of the more smaller things before I get to that. So as you can probably see, this is the, the new joystick that I bought. This is basically a replica quick shot. Uh, it's in crazy colors. The thing of it is, is Amiga Store uh, says that you will not know what colors you get. It's just kind of like what they have is what you get kind of thing. They just pluck one off the shelf and shove it in your box kind of thing. So this is basically a replica quick shot joystick because we don't really have any original joysticks worth the darn. And people on our live streaming have said, hey, you need a joystick, you need a joystick. Well. I got a joystick guys so there you go it's about 25 26 dollars us so 
they look pretty awesome and I actually kind of like this color this is kind of one of the colors that I was kind of going for wanting a color scheme is the bright yellow and green because I have some Irish blood in me and I like my green so we'll go with that so ah let me get some of this stuff out of the way here let's get this out of the way Alright, so um, this is the next uh, piece of equipment that we have. This is actually not for us. So this is actually for a buddy of ours, Alex. So shout out to Alex Cheney. We are actually currently trying to build him a 2000 with a custom blacked out uh, case and everything. So um, thank you, Alex. This is going to be one of your new accessories. This is a Rice Mark II adapter right there. And here you go. That's it right there. Cool thing about this guy is, and we actually use these on our 4000 for Pints and Amiga on our live stream uh, episodes and everything. Uh, these are awesome little devices. So they're nine pin to USB. And they do both mouse, USB mouse and USB joysticks, joy pads, all that sort of thing. And they're awesome. So they will take your mouse spot, turn it into a USB, if I can keep it in my hand, a USB mouse, or it will take your joystick port and like what we do, I do USB joy pads. And these have an EEPROM in them. So all of the stack and everything is already pre-configured. You don't have to do nothing but hook it up to your to your Amiga. And there's flashing lights that indicate one light is joystick, two lights is a joy pad, but it's modified to give you a jump button. Uh, number three lights is mouse emulation mode, and then uh, four lights is CD32 pad. So if you have like we do, and you have USB SNES controllers, like what we use, that gives you all the buttons and ha gives you perfect compatibility for doing CD32 stuff. So, you're welcome, Alex Cheney. There you go. This will be one of your add-ons for your custom black-on-black, -black, blacked-out, Darth Vader-style custom 2000 that we're going to set up for you that we're... Texas weather's been kind of crummy here lately, so we haven't been able to finish up the paint for you, but trust me, man, it's coming, so that's for you, bro. All right, moving on. Now, my dad is kind of, I don't know, he's kind of moved over off somewhere, so he's got some things kind of, mm, okay, so I have that. All right. So yes, this is all correct. So, wow, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want that. I didn't know that that was gonna be in there. Uh, I'm sorry, I want to show y'all, but my dad's not here right now, and I want him to. I want to see his reaction. It's gonna be intense. So here we go. These are these are the SCART to 23 pin RGB for Amigas and stuff. These are real 23 pin RGB. Uh, uh, video ports and everything adapters these go from RGB to SCART these work perfectly for the uh, generic like $30 $40 SCART to HDMI uh, adapter uh, you know upscalers and stuff that a lot we use everybody use Jean uh, Jamie from Morgan Just Games Lemon Amiga they all use them and everything these are great uh, cables and with the real 23 pin hood which makes it a lot easier to do and I have two of them uh, eh, I have nah I can't get it open I have two of them so we have new harnesses for 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 all of our machines like our 500 or 600 and, and things like that. So, there you go. Um, let's see. What is this right here? Matt Joy. Okay, so this is actually supposed to be. 
All right, uh, Amiga Store. This is kind of janky, but this is actually supposed to be the box for 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 the joystick. <laughs> this is supposed to be the box for the joystick, and as you can see, the whole black on black on black looks uh, on these joysticks. It looks just like a original like quick shot controller. So they're basically like a replica quick shot. It's awesome. Okay, so here we go. All right, so here here comes the 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 last of of this out of this box since my dad is now back. I think he had to move some cars around or or something. So dad, prepare to uh, again. Pardon my French, but prepare to ship bricks because I did not expect this to be here. So um. Yeah, let's just uh, make this happen. So yeah, that's that's what exactly my dad is. The, my dad is over there just going like, what the, like he he can't even keep his he can't keep his mouth off his floor. Um, that's a Vampire 500 V2 Plus. So yeah, that's 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 exactly that. So. Um, yeah, that kind of happened. I did not expect this to to be in this box. I was expecting this to be in a whole other shipment. So I'm actually I'm actually I'm actually very surprised um, to see this in this box. This is a this is this is a lot of things ha kind of happening right now. Um, so so yeah, uh, to to basically put this in thing, me and my dad have been talking about between putting this in the 500 or 600. Well, recently, Amiga Store got the, the 500s in stock, and I had a little bit of a slush fund that I've been saving up for, for months now, and I basically had the money for this in my savings account kind of already pre-saved up and ready to go for when they had them um, in stock, or when somebody had them in stock. Uh, unbeknownst to my dad so when I saw the 500s in stock I was like I just I got to get them because they never come in stock and no telling in the 600s of the six ones for the 600 have been delayed so many times that when I saw that the 500 v2 pluses were in stock I just I had to buy it right then and there because they were probably no telling uh, when they were gonna sell out so I just I had to do it and I kind of kept this a secret from from my father. Um, so so you're welcome, Dad. Uh, counted as maybe like an early Father's Day or something. I don't know. Um, so let's just go ahead and open this beast. Um, so yeah, there you go. I I did not again. I was not expecting this to be in this box with this. So this is absolutely out of my control be very careful when taking the card out of the asd bag you could damage card headers okay so let's be very careful let's try to be surgical with this so there you go Okay, so yeah, there you go. There's the Vampire 500 V2 Plus, uh, and yeah, it's it's got SD card storage. Um, unfortunately, I don't think you can boot off of it yet, even with some of the newer cores and everything. Uh, HDMI out. Uh, there's also a spot for an Ethernet module. However, I didn't get that because. We have guru nets and other ethernet solutions i didn't think we really needed that uh this has so so for a few that might not know what this is this is an fpga based uh accelerator for the this particular one for the 500 and it basically has a stock on there the core for the fpga is basically a stupid fast rocket to the moon 68,000 processor that's faster than even a 06 
oh, at its fastest. This is darn near next generation Amiga level of acceleration here. This is stupid. Uh, it has HDMI output, so it has its own built-in output. It gives you millions of colors and things like that. It has an IDE interface on it for hooking up a hard drive that you can boot off of. Uh, and it does have a 128 megs of fast RAM built into it. So this is this is a stupid accelerator. Uh, for y'all that aren't aren't aware or anything, this is like this is a hard to get accelerator. And I was I was I was happy to actually find one that was in stock and actually had the slush fund saved up. I don't get the bag stuck to my elbow to actually be able to afford it. So this is a 300, basically a 380, $385 accelerator for a 500, but it's a smoking accelerator. It basically takes over. It, it makes a 500 just stupid. If you can afford this, do it because in my opinion, once you throw on, you know, an ACA 500 plus or all the countless other accelerators, witchers, all that sort of stuff, and you blow out your Amiga and you put a OCS, you know, flicker fixer and stuff on it, and a Z3 board and all that crazy junk, you're basically at the price of this anyway. So when you can find them on st in stock and you can afford them, Get it because it's worth it and like I said I'm surprised to even hold this in my hand I didn't even expect this to be in this box so thank you Amiga store for actually stocking them and actually getting a, a, a piece of them in stock uh, they sold out fairly quick they are sold out now so unfortunately you can't get them anymore uh, so Apollo's been having some really bad uh, supply issues so Again, lucky to get this. Glad to have it. My dad's jaw, I still is think I'm, is, I think is still on the floor. <laughs> so, that will be going in our 500. So, let me get this back in this electrostatic bag here. So, and again... That was an absolute surprise. As, uh, the moment I opened up that box, y'all could see my face. But I rewind the video. I was absolutely flabbergasted because I did not expect this to be in there. And there's a user manual and an installation manual. So be on the lookout for that in the coming months because that will be definitely featured on a Pine Samia live stream where we will be showing off the Apollo and a 500. Also, curious about loading up those new HEA cores and seeing how that works. Yeah, you heard me right. That's an OCS machine turned into an HEA machine. So, we're going to see how that works out. Um, hmm. So excited, guys. That was that was fantastic. That's uh, That right there is almost a video by itself. But, we have a couple more things to talk about. Uh, mostly pertaining to first some things that were actually sent to us that's right we have fans that will actually send us stuff to us in this particular case one fan in particular mr. Steve Steve Edgar to be exact and I'm sorry if I screwed up that last name but trying my best here but he is a fan of ours from Dallas he was actually featured in Pints in Dreamcast episode four, if I'm not mistaken. And he decided to send us a couple of interesting things through the mail. To start with, we have an own little Ziploc baggie. Now I've already pre-constructed this and put it together and everything. But he gave us or sent us a little 3D printed mount for a 2000 for a GoTech. And as you can see, I've already got it mounted in there, already situated, glued in, all that good jazz. Oh, you know, 
good and everything. And yeah, I had to, it came in multiple pieces. I had to super glue the face plate on and all that good jazz and mount in the board and all that good and everything. But thank you, Steve. Awesome. We needed that. We're trying to currently build a 2000 of our own outside of just Alex's 2000, custom 2000 that we're building. Man, I'm starting to get bu a bunch of uh, both trash and goodies kind of stacked up here over off camera that's getting a little bit out of hand. Next up is, and this might look slightly familiar because it is slightly familiar. This is another 4, 000, a 4,000 daughter board that Steve sent us. However, this one's a revision B version one, and we don't have all the parts for this yet. We may very well build this ourselves, but we gotta source all the parts and everything for it. But this is a later or an earlier version of the one that I already bought. And right when Steve was sending us this, I just bought that, so. Sorry, Steve, but thank you, Steve, because we're going to build this one, too, and maybe we'll keep it as backup, sell it, who knows, so maybe give it away to a lucky viewer or something, I don't know, we're, we're going to find out, but we need to build this one, and thank you, Steve, but again, this is a revision B1, a B version 1, and I have the B version 1.2. And there are slight differences, but yeah. Thank you, Steve. Next up from Mr. Steve, this monstrosity of a card. Yo, what the heck is that? So this is a Intel Pentium 4 with two gigs of RAM, ultra uh, SCSI IDE USB VGA, PS2, all of that. This is basically a Windows XP machine on a board. That will, as you can probably see, has a PCI connector, but also an ISA or ISA, however you want to pronounce it, connector. This, my fair gentlemen, or ladies and gentlemen, I should say, will go in a 2000. You put those last slots, uh, uh, ISA slots on a 2000, this will go in there. However, this is not a bridge board or anything like this, this that, or like that. This just basically steals power from the Amiga and puts a PC inside of your Amiga. So, interesting, kind of cool. Gives you basically a retro XP machine on a card inside of a 2000. Kind of neat. So moving on and almost done, I'm going to take another sip of my beer here. Two last little things, and these are projects of our own accord, and that just fell. Projects of our own accord that me and my dad just recently fixed up and, and finished. So starting off our modified GoTech and it has for the first time ever our first encoder mod so yes that is a dialed encoder that we did to a regular GoTech it's got the OLED mod and everything on it dad just finished this up about an hour before this video uh, being filmed that is and yeah, so we now have a nice little encoder pot and it works fantastic and so, so much quicker and nice. So thank you, dad, for fixing that up for us. So that's a nice little project we've been working on. We also have our Workbench 3.14s for our 2000 that were just flashed and everything. These are G G Lab uh, flash bombs and everything that we just got done flashing. Um, and then our recent most important 
modification and you're going, that's a pat that's an ATX power supply. Well, not really, because it's got a 500, 600, 1200, 5 pin connection on it. And it's got an extra power rail. So we took an old uh, ITX, ATX uh, power supply and modified it. And we used the 24 uh, pin rail. So it's all conditioned and all that and, and everything. It's not done, it's done right, not wrong or anything. Uh, but we left one of the power rails for external stuff active. And yes, we have a big button rocket switch for it. But yeah, so because my 600 here, as I mentioned before, is a PAL European 600, it came with a PAL European power supply, which obviously doesn't work in 120 US. So yeah, we had to figure out a solution to get that bad boy powered. Came up with this because we have plenty of these lying around. So. We chop, or well, we didn't chop the end off of the power supply. We actually opened the original 600 European 600 power supply, unsoldered the the actual cable, and soldered it in there and made it right and all that good jazz. And it works fantastic. And like I said, it's using the actual 24 pin rail that would be normally used for a PC but adapter right so it's got all of the normal conditioning and regulation and all that and then it, we've implanted the soft start switch so that's where that's going to come in for the 600 and also that 500 with that freaking vampire and my dad just uh slid me over one last piece of hardware as a homage for the end just as a quick plug, thank you, Mr. Carlos. We've been talking about these for a while for from our live streams and everything else. And can't can't plug these enough. But thank you, Mr. Carl, for, for these fantastic guru nets. These are strictly for Amiga for the guru nets. These are parallel uh, e network adapters. Carlos, sorry, Mr. Carlos. Uh, these are parallel. And why is my phone going off? I'm sorry about that. But these are parallel Ethernet adapters, all like a plip box, but better because Mr. Carlos has redesigned and re-engineered the plip box to make it better, simpler, and easier to work with and this particular one with the guru net is for amiga systems only with a parallel port he also has all amigas ever all amigas all amigas he also has the guru modem which is over a rs232 port that works with any on paper any system with an rs232 port Everything from PCs, Amigas, Macs, all of it, retro, modern, all of it. Uh, so keep an eye out for the Guru Nets and the Guru Modems. And this is, a, again, these are made by our good friend Carlos at electronicsisfun.com. And you can find them there and on eBay. And so thank you, Carlos, because these are one of our biggest network solutions for all of our Amigas. And I'm sure if we had any retro PCs or other retro machines, we would probably have a couple of Guru modems too. So, thank y'all everybody for tuning in. Thank y'all, and I hope everybody had as good of a beer as I did. And holy crap, was I excited to see that vampire card in that box. I was not expecting that. So, y'all have a good evening, and y'all have a good day. And uh, we'll see y'all during the next video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.